my immediate advice is the council solicitor who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the council's planning officers, highway engineer and environmental health officer who will present the application this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people you see on both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the application this evening and to make the decision. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualifying petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of their petition for up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak on behalf of the residents. However, once the Lord Councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may be followed by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on the application. The order of tonight's agenda will vary, subject to uh, the committee's permission, in that we look at the, uh, those that have a petition on them first of all. That's okay with the committee. Are you okay with that? Fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, if a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, matters will not be discussed this evening and will be discussed at a subsequent meeting. Anyone who's here for those applications can leave if they so wish. Thank you. Uh, committee, the minutes, pages 1 to 10, can I have approval for those, please? Yes, yeah, okay. approved.
13 are visitors. Yes, item 13, land adjacent to Dale Garden in Heswell. This is a change of policy in the sense of the fact that it is in a greenbelt area at the moment and there's a concern with the encroachment on the equity of development there. Uh, we need to see the impact on the greenbelt of that proposed development. So I'm moving for those three applications. Okay, thank you. Are there any others? Excuse me, so that means there's definitely a site, a, a site meeting for the Cedar Lodge one, right? Yeah. 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 When, yes. when will that, there's no idea when that will be? Or uh, that? that will be on the 8th of November. Okay, thanks very much. We, we start the site with at 10am, but we somewhere between 5 and 10 there. I'll get some tears as well. Oh no, we can't accept those. Like <laughs> I mean, for me. <laughs>
The site is located in the primarily residential area where the principle of new residential development is acceptable, subject to the criteria set out in policy HS4. Uh, Given the previous use of the site for sheltered housing, the permission granted in 2012 for residential redevelopment, and having regards to amendments secured and conditions proposed, it is considered that the proposed development is acceptable and is recommended for approval. Uh, there is a qualified additional objection. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, would the um, <coughs> petitioners like to come forward to speak on this? No, there's none here, Chair. Okay, uh, you can speak on behalf of the residents, Mike? I am. Would you like to come forward? Two story to two story. Where 
terms of uh, council facilities made in terms of these discussions with the applicant, is there any way that the Ways and Planning Committee can either ask for a condition or put some sort of agreement in place to ensure that those driveways are installed as part of the application? Thank you for your chair. Uh, as I explained on site, a biofield is a non classified road, so they don't need planning permission to create uh, a driveway for an access onto their property. Um, so the residents could do that themselves without requiring planning permission. They would need the uh, consent of the highway authority to drop the curb, and they could apply to the authority to do that. I understand that um, the ward councillor has had some discussions with the, uh, the applicants, the developer, to see whether or not they would be prepared to.
explain the, uh, the plans before I do the, the presentation. This is the front elevation that jumps onto Piper's Lane. Uh, this is the rear elevation that overlooks the uh, way. This is the side elevation that um, is side onto the existing 103 Piper's Lane. So planning permission is sought for the erection of a detached property adjacent to 103 Pipers Lane in Peswick. This application follows the refusal of an earlier planning application uh, by the planning committee on the 19th of August of this year. At that time there was concern regarding the siting scale for the design of the proposal due to its relationship with the adjacent green belt surrounding the coast area of special landscape value. The footpath running adjacent to the northern boundary of the site, um, uh, giving access to the Wirral Way, and the impact that such a dwelling would have on views in and out of the special landscape valley, given the site's prominent location at the end of houses along the Pampers Lane. Particular reference was made to the flat roof and to the blank rendered elevation facing the foot, public footpath that gives access to the Wirral Way. This latest application seeks to address those early concerns that led to planning, uh, to planning permission being refused. The application is partly retrospective, given that the basement element has been constructed. Um, members will remember that we conducted a site visit last time, so there are members in the committee who have seen the site. The site is entirely located within the primary residential area, and permission for a dwelling has been approved on this site in 2014, which remains extant. That consent was for a more traditional form of dwelling, picking up on elements of 103 Pipers Lane. This current proposal has introduced a shallow pitched roof, um, so you can see um, the pitch here and here. And so it's introduced a shallow pitched roof which breaks up perceived massing. Um, placement of additional windows on the north-facing elevations, together 
accept that an attempt has been made to try and soften the situation. That's obviously been done, no question about that. But in my opinion, it hasn't overcome the original problem and the reason why I originally removed the refusal. It's a matter of opinion, quite clearly, and that will have to come out in the washroom and decide which way the committee is going to go. Okay, if there's nobody else wants to speak on this, then David, do you want to move the refusal? Yes, thank you.
Commission follows an earlier uh, proposal which was refused in 2014 and seeks to address those earlier reasons for refusal. The residential development is a departure from the development plan due to its designation as primarily industrial on proposals. Since 2007, buildings and operations within the site began to close and businesses got smaller. The existing buildings on site are now vacant and falling into a state of disrepair. The site has been marketed since 2014 refusal for uses in keeping with its industrial designation. Marketing has included sales boards on site, proactive marketing with industrial agents, online adverts and property magazines, and marketing through the UK Trade and Investment Service. Support has also been given um, from, uh, through the Royal Council to, um, um, to encourage uh, industrial uses on the site. Some original expressions of interest were not pursued due to the state of repair or suitability of the existing buildings. Other expressions of interest included retail use, leisure use and residential lending. On the basis of extensive marketing efforts for this site, it is included that there is no reasonable prospect of the site coming forward for employment uses. In the meantime, the site, in the meantime, the site falls further into a state of disrepair, which ultimately could begin to erode the overall character of the area and impact negatively to the wider locality. The delivery of up to 199 dwellings significantly contributes towards the council's housing support. The site is located partially within the area of greatest need for affordable housing and partially outside. An affordable housing viability assessment is undertaken and independently appraised, and 10% provision is, is viable, resulting in 30 units of affordable housing. There have been playing fields located in the northwest corner of the site, but these have not been used for some time, probably since 2007, when the previous sports and social club closed down. Sport England based their comments on aerial photos from Google Maps, which appears to show a, a, a laid out sports pitch. It has not been possible to verify what that photo was taken, and signed affidavits from several people that appear to support, appear to support the last use of the plane during 2007. Nevertheless, the applicants have agreed to a contribution for replacement facilities, which would be based on a need need rather than a specific sport, but could ultimately be provisioned in placement pitches. In terms of earlier concerns relating to floodlifts, a full assessment has been undertaken and submitted, which demonstrates that the site can be developed without increasing flood risks, uh, without increasing risk of flooding on the site or elsewhere. Conditions relating to sustainable drainage systems are also proposed if the application is approved. There are a number of material considerations that have been detailed for members in the report in front of you tonight. These have led to a recommendation of approval. The extensive marketing that has taken place shows there is unlikely to be any take up on the site uh, for industrial development, which has been weighed against the authorities' need to improve its housing and land supply. The provision of 199 new dwellings would significantly contribute towards the council's housing supply. A comprehensive Section 106 agreement will secure affordable housing, improvements to public transport and highway safety, and replacement sports facilities, amongst other things. The petition that was formally uh, the petition that was submitted has been formally withdrawn, and the retention and maintenance of the Jellico water feature at the front of the site will also be, will also be secured in the Section 106 agreement. Overall, having weighed all material planning considerations together, it is concluded that the scheme now presented to members, taking account of all the comprehensive and detailed assessments submitted around marketing, flood risk, noise impact, transport, affordable housing, etc., and taking into consideration the detailed conditions, uh, the detailed conditions provided.
Women's Chair, uh, first of all on page 27, it mentions, mentions provision for replacement um, of playing pitches that can be secured through a section 106 legal agreement. As these pitches have not been used, as the officer pointed out, for many years, and as a ward councillor, I know we have a new provision of pictures uh, in our ward through Tramia development. Could then the planning officer confirm that uh, the ward councillors could suggest an alternative to pictures? Should this be approved this evening? The one is 